Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're getting back to work on this Stratocaster guitar kit from Solo Music Gear. I know I should be working on the neck right now, but I just can't wait to get to work on this body. We've got, we've had our vote. It's going to be cyberpunk and, uh, well, I'm going to go a little crazy with it. So quite a few of you did also want the rustic kind of steampunk look, and we will get to that in a future build. But for this one, we're going cyberpunk. And, well, frankly, I love that idea. There's going to be some massive modifications and probably unreasonable modifications made to this thing as far as how it looks. But let's start with the big one. I'm going to take the top eighth inch off of this body. I'm going to shave it right off. You will have hopefully seen in a recent video the setup I built to do that. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. But I'm going to put this in there. I'm going to use a beautiful four flute Radian Tools router bit. It's a surfacing bit. It's going to take this off nice and smooth. Check out the link in the description if you want to see those, along with my new DeWalt router. If you want that, obviously the Amazon link in the description, you can get that as well. We're going to take the top eighth inch off for a couple reasons. Number one, I want to get rid of this round over. Okay, I want a nice flat surface to work with when I change the top on this thing to begin with. Number two, I don't want that extra eighth inch of thickness on here afterward. I need this to be level. I don't want to have to shim the neck pocket. Not that that's a, a difficult thing to do, but I don't want to end up with a thicker guitar than before. So I'm going to deal with that all at once. I think what we're going to end up doing is drilling access through here all the way to the back so that we can load pickups in from the back and everything and we're going to have a nice even smooth top. Here's the kicker. That top's going to be aluminum. I'm not going to give away the rest of it right now. I'm going to do some interesting stuff to the top. Uh, but yeah, we're looking at an aluminum top probably with some hollowing underneath it. That's enough of my secrets for now. Let's get started. So to make sure that I'm going to be able to stick this thing down properly inside the item that I created to be able to shave the top off, I need it to be nice and smooth. It's got a single coat of sealer on it right now, which means that it's actually pretty rough. The sealer actually causes the grain to raise, so you end up with this textured surface. But because they've done that, because they've put that coat of sealer on there, it smooths out really quickly and easily. So I've just got a piece of 400 grit here, and this is only going to take a few seconds. Ooh as long as I'm not an idiot about it. Only gonna take a few seconds and already it's very smooth. Not necessarily perfect. There's certainly gonna be more sanding than that when all is said and done, but definitely a nice smooth surface. It feels perfectly smooth to the touch and you just saw it, it was only a few seconds. So that is what I needed. Now my tape is gonna stick to it properly and I'm gonna be able to use the old super glue trick to stick this down and make sure that, uh, yeah, that I don't have to worry about it moving around when I take my router to it. So, the super glue trick itself is something that I saw on the Crimson Guitars channel. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. If I can find a piece of masking tape that doesn't shred, I guess this must be an old roll. We'll, uh, we'll get going on it here. The idea is you put a piece of masking tape on both of the surfaces that you want to join and then you super glue those masking tape pieces together and it's easy to remove. Apparently I need to get a new roll. Okay, let's try that again. So we've got, we'll just do a couple lines of it here. Make sure it's burnished down real nice. And that should be perfectly adequate to hold this thing down. <clears throat> like I said though, make sure it's stuck on there well. Yes, I am using the super glue container to burnish it down. Now we need to stick it to our other surface, which is this box. I've got it so that there's two and a quarter inches of depth here, which is plenty for your average guitar and certainly enough to do some of the thicker ones. And as you can see, there's plenty of room for the body in there. Doesn't take much glue, just make sure when you go to stick it down after that you line it up properly. Otherwise you will have just glued 
masking tape to the back of your guitar body, and that would be, well, foolish. So now that that's in there nice and sturdy, there's really not much else to do except go ahead and route it. Make sure you know how deep you need to go. Feel free to mark it on the guitar itself or use a plunge router to get the right depth. I recommend going in more than one pass. It makes things easier on your bit, on your router. It makes it less likely that your bit will catch on the guitar somewhere and throw it somewhere uh, and you're less likely to get tear out. The four flute bit that I'm using from Radiant Tools is amazing. It's going to do a great job. It's going to leave me with a nice even surface and it's less likely to cause tear out because it's got those four flutes. But at the same time, better safe than sorry. Do a little bit at a time. Okay, I'm going to gear up with uh, some goggles and a mask here and get started. Let's get this thing shaved down. That may have been one of the most satisfying feelings I have ever had doing that. Oh, that's just so clean. It's, it's smoother than it was before. And I found out in doing this, because I know this is level, and obviously that's level, the guitar wasn't, wasn't the same width all the way across. Well, it is now, so yeah. Just gonna grab a quick photo for Instagram here. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know this, but I basically end up posting most of my projects and stuff, posting a couple previews and photos of them before I actually post the video. For one, because it's easier to take a picture than it is to take a video. Uh, <laughs> and also just because it seems like a nice touch. So if you're not already following me on Instagram and you're interested in that stuff, um, I got the before and after pictures for a lot of the projects that I've done on there. Check that out. Link is in the description. Yeah, I, I, have, uh, I can't, can't say enough good things about that bit. That is fantastic. Thank you, Radiant Tools, for making that. I am very pleased with it. There is a ton of sawdust in this thing. Oh, that super glue really sticks. All right, there we go. And just like that, we're back. Oh, I spoke about five seconds too soon here. Just like that, we're back to having a nice clean guitar body, except thinner and with a beautiful flat surface to glue up to. I need to clean this now. Um, luckily, because I used the masking tape trick there, the tape itself comes off the bottom very easily. I'm just gonna leave it in here and go dump this whole thing into the garbage. And then, uh, yeah, we're, we're back in business. So once again, if you're interested in that, um, in that router bit, check out the link in the description for Radiant Tools. If you're interested in the router itself, uh, I really like it. That's, I mean, why I got it. So check out the Amazon link in the description if you want that. If you buy it through there, it helps me out quite a bit. But 
if uh, if you don't want to just go find it somewhere else in any event I do recommend it it's a nice router for the price there are definitely some more expensive ones that do better uh, you know have some extra tricks like some of the Triton ones for example but for the price I'm, I'm pretty fond of this so yeah all right before I bother doing the cleanup and everything here let's talk about let's talk a little bit more about the plans for this guy so what is this guitar getting? Why do I keep saying it's going to be so crazy? Well, for one, it's going to have some hollowing. For another, it's going to have that aluminum top. So of course, the hollowing out portion is for aesthetics, weight, and for those of you who believe in it, I guess sound chambering, but frankly, on a guitar like this, I don't think that that's going to matter. Another thing that we're going to do is turn this into a hard tail. Okay, so this is now going to have a hardtail bridge as opposed to that vintage tremolo, so it'll have more tuning stability by virtue of that, uh, and I, I don't like those vintage tremolos, so I'm going to change it. It's going to have access to the pickups from the back, okay? This thing is already routed to, uh, to support dual humbuckers, so that is probably what I'm going to end up putting in here. I'm going to design the top to accommodate that. We may change the style of the output jack, but I'm not entirely sure yet. There's a possibility that I'm gonna end up mounting it through the, the edge instead of the front, or I might just mount it to the top itself, kind of coming straight out in the style of a semi-hollow. We are also going to do some custom carving work on the back. And by custom carving work, I don't mean graphics, I don't mean I'm gonna carve a dragon in there. I just, I'm gonna take a new tool that I've got, and I'll show this to you in due course, a new grinding tool that's going to allow me to carve this belly carve in nice and deep a lot easier and do a little bit of other work around the edges to, you know, kind of make things a little easier to work with in that, in that uh, regard, so to speak. I'm also going to take my Shinto rasp to it a little bit probably just to get that, you know, nice control over some of the angling that I want to do. Again, this is gonna allow for some re weight reduction. I do have to be careful when I'm doing this so that I don't carve down into the areas that I'm hollowing out. And when you're coming at it from both sides like that, you have to be very careful that you don't end up just making a bloody hole in your guitar. Like I said, we're gonna have access to the controls from the back here, and I'm gonna get in touch with my man over at Gun Street Wiring Shop uh, and see if he will do up some custom wiring for me because he is a mad scientist when it comes to that stuff. He's a genius and I know that all the parts that, and components that he uses are quality. So I'm gonna talk to him and we'll cross that bridge when we come to it as well. I think that's about it for this one. I am gonna go ahead now and get my, <laughs> get the information and measurements that I need off of this to begin making my top and uh, stay tuned, stick around. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out the next episode as we continue through this crazy build. Maybe we'll get to work on the neck next time. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good one. I will see you next time.